Hi YouTube, I'm Jack, a junior doctor working in London. Uh, now I've just finished my core surgical training and when I was applying for core surgical training I found it really useful to look at a current trainee's portfolio. So that's what I'll be doing for you today. Now it's not the most perfect portfolio but I really just wanted to use it to illustrate two things. Firstly, what I did to earn points and secondly, the evidence that I collected to prove it. Before I start, you should know that my portfolio was for the 2019 application round, but don't worry, I'll be scoring it against the most recent 2021 core surgical training portfolio checklist. At the end of the video, I'll reveal my final portfolio score and give you my top three tips to get started. I've included the timestamps up here and in the description, so just skip to the sections that you want to watch. So off we go. First of all, when I applied, the portfolio was in a folder, However, in the last application round, the portfolio was online. And for that, you had to upload your documents to the portal for them to then review them. At the beginning of the portfolio, don't forget to include your Oriel application form. This is usually compulsory and it does allow them to review your occupational history. In my paper portfolio, I also included my CV and the portfolio checklist. Uh, however, the online upload portal, you probably don't need to do this, depending on what their guidance is. Now we move on to the point scoring sections. First of all is the commitment to specialty, uh, which is a bit of a monster of a section as it has lots of different subsections. On a side note, when it comes to preparing your portfolio, I put index headings at the start of each section. And these are really useful for making your portfolio legible and listing your achievements, as well as proposing what score you would get for each of the elements. Even for the electronic portfolios, I would recommend including these index sections so let's go through commitment to specialty section by section. I sat the MRCS Part A in April of my foundation year one and I passed it. The evidence is fairly straightforward as I just included my pass letter. In the self-assessment checklist, this scores three points. My advice is that if you're 100% committed to surgery, then you might as well do the MRCS Part A as soon as you can because you're going to need it anyway for your core surgical training. It's also something that typically doesn't get funded by your study budget, even as a core surgical trainee, so there's no advantage for leaving it to later. For attendance at surgical courses, they very helpfully give you a list of things that count. I personally did basic surgical skills, advanced trauma light support and start surgery. Uh, that's because in my day we had to do three of them, however I think they reduced this due to COVID. The evidence I included were the course certificates. I remember START was the cheapest course at the time that I could do. Uh, I think it was probably about £150 uh, when I did it three years ago or so. And so that was the best value of money for me at the time. All in all, I would score four points on the modern scoring system. One thing to note is that basic surgical skills and ATLS are required during your core surgical training uh, and they will be funded by the study budget then. So if you wanted to avoid paying the fees for those, you could delay them until core surgical training. I did, however, manage to get ATLS funded uh, during my foundation year two. To get full marks in surgical experience, you only need to assist in 15 procedures. Uh, so assist means get scrubbed in. I achieved this by starting my e-log book uh, as soon as possible during medical school. And by the time of interview, I had assisted or performed 67 procedures. Don't worry if you haven't set one up yet as it's never too late, even in F2, because it's not too hard to get 15 procedures. To set up your e-logbook is really simple. Just go to elogbook.org and register for an account as a doctor or a medical student. And then you can log your procedures either through website or through the app. For evidence, I printed off an anonymized summary of the cases that I did, which you can do through the website. Uh, and then I got that signed by a consultant and scanned it in. Three points. For the surgical taster, uh, I was a bit of a muppet because I didn't organise one. Uh, and the reason for that is I thought that I had enough surgical rotations in F1 and F2 uh, that um, it wouldn't really add very much. My advice is just organise one anyway, uh, because it's an easy three points, uh, which I neglected. To do so, all you have to do is get in contact with a consultant surgeon in a specialty of your choice in your hospital, uh, and then ask to organise a taster week. For evidence, include a signed letter from the consultant, as well as ideally your timetable for the week and a reflection. Zero points for me. For the surgical elective, uh, if you're a doctor, then you'll already have done this. Uh, however, if you're a medical student still, you can organise one. 
I did my elective in plastic surgery and for evidence I collected a signed letter from the consultant supervising me. I was really silly though because I left it right before my applications before I asked for the confirmation letter. What you should do is get your confirmation letter while you're doing the elective, that way you have it there and then. The self-assessment checklist also asks for a reflection, so include this as well. Three points. <sighs> Moving on to the other sections, uh, for the postgraduate qualifications and degrees, I did an intercalated year during my medical school uh, and got a 2-1 grade. The evidence I included was my transcript to include the grade, as well as the degree certificate. All in all, this gets two points. People often ask me as well uh, whether it's worth doing a master's or a PhD. Uh, my honest answer is that there are more time efficient ways to get points for core surgical training. However, if you're really passionate about academia, then you could do that if you wanted to. Although doing something like leading a clinical audit will earn you more points than a PhD anyway. The other thing to remember if you do do one is that you need the certificate by the time of the application. This was an interesting one for me uh, because I actually gave myself zero points in the self-assessment but the interviewers actually upgraded my score based on the evidence that I submitted. So essentially I took part in a national student surgical skills competition organised by the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. I came first place in the London heat uh, and then came second place in the grand final. I didn't think this was a prize because I didn't win the final. But when they saw it, they decided they wanted to give me some points. The moral of the story is to err on the side of optimism with things like this, where they really could be counted as prizes. Uh, however, obviously you can't lie on your portfolio, so don't do that. The evidence I included were my certificates. The scoring in my day was a little bit different, but I remember they gave me half the maximum points, uh, so I'll just say four points for the sake of argument on this. Other ways to get national prizes are through undergraduate and postgraduate essay prizes. Uh, there are so many of these um, and they don't have to be in a surgical field. All you have to do is Google them, submit some essays and hopefully one of them will win. Here I was the lead for one closed loop audit. That is an audit with two cycles, which I then presented at a national meeting. The evidence I used included a copy of the PowerPoint presentation uh, as well as a signed letter from the consultant confirming that I'd done the audit and finally a certificate of oral presentation from the national conference. This scores 11 points on the self-assessment checklist and my advice here is to do one good closed loop audit and present it nationally rather than doing several small audits that you don't eventually present. For teaching experience, I organised uh, some ENT teaching uh, for several different hospitals uh, and I achieved this by uh, finding an ENT consultant to supervise uh, and then doing a self-designed uh, student selected module or uh, components, so SSMs or SSEs. It actually took quite a lot of work um, and I needed to use some uh, connections with other ENT uh, surgeons and medical students to get it uh, set up uh, in different places and the evidence that I collected were a signed letter from the consultant uh, confirming what I'd done and how long I'd done it for, uh, as well as collecting feedback forms uh, which I summarised uh, and uh, writing a reflection as well. In the self-assessment checklist this earns eight points. For training and teaching uh, I was a tutor on something called the Teacher Development Programme uh, which was something run by a teaching hospital I was working at uh, during my F1. This delivered uh, training and teaching less than two days in total uh, and the good thing was that it was free. The evidence I included were a certificate of completion of the course as well as uh, the teaching feedback and a reflection uh, of my learning. That scores two points on the self-assessment checklist. Other things you can do are uh, teaching the teachers or training the trainers courses. Um, these are two-day courses and tend to cost money. However, they also score at most ST3 uh, applications as well. Another thing I get asked is whether to do a PG Cert or PG Diploma in Medical Education. Again, my advice is that um, there are other more time efficient ways to score points. However, if you do have a passion for Medical Education and you want to do that long term, then uh, it can be worth doing those. Bear in mind, to get the full four points for this category, you need to have completely completed your PG Cert or PG Dip. If you're halfway through, you'd only get three points. For presentations, I delivered uh, an international oral presentation and I evidenced this uh, with a certificate of oral presentation as well as the PowerPoint uh, presentation that I used. The main way to get a national or international oral presentation is to try and find a good study or project to do and then submit it to a few international conferences. 
This earns six points in the 2021 checklist. For publications, I'd only submitted one paper uh, which hadn't yet been uh, reviewed, so I scored zero points on the section. The main thing to note about publications is they do take time. My quickest publication uh, during core surgical training was a case report that took six months from idea conception to acceptance, and a systematic review I was involved in took about two years. If you're in F2 already, uh, then it may seem like publications are not really worth it. However, they do score points at ST3 application, which is your long-term goal, and because they take time, it's worth starting them now because they also tend to be the thing that differentiates candidates from each other. For leadership and management, uh, essentially I approached the local Doctors Mess president and asked to create a role uh, called the Doctors Mess Sports Officer. And then in this role, I would organize sports sessions for the members of the mess. My evidence was a signed letter from the Doctors Mess president and they accepted this as a local leadership role. In the current checklist, it would score four points. I was actually a bit on the fence about whether they would accept this for points. However, I was in the role for six months by the time of interview, and also the positive change I demonstrated was that this role didn't previously exist. Other things you can do include becoming your local mess president, or if you want to go for the big points, going for BMA rep, or become a rep on ACIT, or the Association of Surgeons in Training. Bear in mind that these roles do require extra work, but they do come with excellent networking opportunities. Right, so, on to my final portfolio score, which for 2021 would have been 50 out of 72. Uh, my actual score in 2019 was 45 out of 72, which is probably partly due to there being a different scoring system in place. Now that you've finished the video, there are three things that I'd recommend that you do to instantly get started on your portfolio. One, to register for the e-logbook. I've included a link to this in the description. Two, book the surgical courses. Uh, like start surgery uh, and any other in the list that they recommend. And three, email to arrange your taster week in surgery. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have any other topics you'd like me to cover in my future videos, leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please remember to like and subscribe. And that tells me that this is the kind of video that you want to watch. Stay safe, everybody.